Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Irish Beer Cheese Puffs. That's right, we are taking Irish beer, an Irish butter, an Irish cheddar, and we're going to use a French technique to make some easy cheesy snacks inspired by Kentucky beer cheese, which we will serve with a spring onion spread featuring mascarpone. So yes, that's four culinary influences in one recipe, which I'll have to check, but might be a food wish record. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is add some Irish butter to a saucepan. And if you can't find Irish butter, you can just use what they call European style. Otherwise, any butter will work. And then to that, we will add some Irish beer. And as you can see by the color, I'm using a stout, since that bittersweet flavor profile is gonna work perfect in these. Plus, I think it gives these a beautiful color, but really any kind of beer will work. And what we'll do is set our heat to medium high and we will toss in a little bit of salt as well as a little touch of sugar. And we will wait for our mixture to start simmering and for our butter to melt. At which point we will add our all purpose flour all at once. And I know it seems like you should gradually add it, but you shouldn't. Just dump it all in and start stirring with a wooden spoon. And at first it's not gonna look that good. In fact, it will look kind of bad and lumpy and like, I don't know what I'm doing, but after stirring and mixing and mashing for about 30 seconds, it should all smooth out and come together. And once that happens, what we'll do is cook this stirring for a minute or two, or until our dough dries out a little bit and starts sticking to the bottom of the pan, which is generally considered the sign you are done, but not finished. Because what I like to do when that happens is turn off the heat and then keep stirring for another minute or two, attempting to scrape as much of that stuff off the bottom of the pan as we can. And if you don't get it all, don't worry, it's going to be fine. But generally, most of it will release. And then what we'll do once we have stirred that with the heat off for about a minute is pull it off the stove and transfer it into a bowl where we will finish this by whisking in two large eggs. But very important, we have to do these one at a time. So we'll go ahead and add one in and we'll start whisking. And when we first start, I like to take just a little bit of that hot dough and mix that into this first egg a little bit at a time. And then once that starts to be incorporated, we can get a little more aggressive and whisk this all together. And that's it. Once we have that first egg mixed in, we'll go ahead and add the second one and repeat the same process. And before you know it, a very sticky dough will have formed. And yes, towards the end, most of it's going to be inside your whisk. So once that comes together, we'll go ahead and grab our spatula and clean that whisk off very thoroughly. And then we'll finish the job by mixing this for a few seconds with the spatula at which point we're ready to add our Irish cheese, which for me will be a nice sharp cheddar. And by the way, even though we're using Irish ingredients, I am in no way saying this is an authentic Irish recipe. And to prove it, we will also add a couple shakes of cayenne. Then we'll take our spatula and give this a good mix. And by the way, the Irish cheddar pairs perfectly in this, but any kind of melty cheese will work. So feel free to stir in anything you want. I mean, you are after all the Hillary Duffs of your Irish beer cheese puffs. But personally, I do think a nice sharp cheddar is the best choice. And that's it. Once our cheese has been mixed in, we can start transferring portions onto a Silpat lined baking sheet, which I like to do with this sorbet scoop, which holds about one rounded tablespoon of dough. And since I've done this so many times, I know this is going to give me exactly 12 portions, which no is not nearly enough for a party. So feel free to double or triple or quadruple this recipe. And yes, you can just use a tablespoon to do this and your puffs will come out fine but they might not be quite as nicely shaped. Which really, who cares? We're eating cheese puffs. And then before these go in the oven, we want to top them with another couple teaspoons of grated cheddar. And as we place that on, some of it's going to fall onto the pan, which is totally fine, since what we'll do is use that to stick to the sides or just simply push against the bottom of our scoop. And depending on our level of commitment, we could make sure every little last particle of cheese is attached to the dough. But if we don't, and some of that browns onto the pan, and we just pick those pieces up and eat them after this bakes, then so be it. Either way works for me. But ideally, most of that cheese is attached to the dough. And that's it. Once those have been cheddared, they are ready to transfer into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 25 minutes, or until they're nicely puffed and beautifully browned, and hopefully look like this. And I would love to give you a better look, but I can't, because what we're going to do is turn off the oven, and we're going to let these cool in the oven for about a half hour with the door cracked open. And that way, these will dry out a little bit, and they won't collapse when they cool. So we'll leave those in there just like that with the oven off. 
while we move on to make our spring onion mascarpone spread, which I'm going to do by adding one chopped leek to a little bit of olive oil in a pan set over medium heat, along with a nice big pinch of salt. And I'm going to cook these leeks stirring until they're just barely tender, but hopefully still mostly green. And because this might take up to like 10 minutes, every once in a while I like to splash in a little bit of water into the pan, which is going to help those leeks soften up a little bit quicker, and also to help prevent browning. Which, by the way, would not be a big problem, but simply for appearance's sake, I want to keep these as green as I can. And when they go from being kind of tough and fibrous to just barely tender, we can stop and add in some sliced green onions, also known as scallions, as well as spring onions. And what we'll do is stir those in, but we're only going to cook those for like a minute, or right, maybe two, but we just want to give those a very brief saute so they don't get too soft and retain some of their texture. And that's it. Once what we're calling our spring onions are done, we will transfer those into a bowl where we should probably let them cool for about five or 10 minutes before we add the juice of half a lemon, followed by our beautiful, creamy, decadent mascarpone cheese. And that is pretty much it for this incredibly simple, but shockingly delicious spread. So we'll go ahead and give that a good mix, at which point we could be done, but we're not sure, since we still need to taste it and adjust. So that's exactly what I did, and I decided to need a little more salt, plus a pinch of freshly ground black pepper. So I stirred that in before giving it one more taste. And once we're happy with that, we can simply refrigerate it until needed, which is going to be pretty soon, since I'm going to pull my cheese puffs out of the turned off oven, where they've been resting with the door cracked for about a half hour. And you're probably thinking, didn't I see one that had a big crack in it? Well, yes, you did. But I turned that one around away from the camera, which in the business we call artistic license. But anyway, notwithstanding a few cracks and holes, I thought these looked amazing. And I went ahead and served those up next to my spring onion mascarpone. Although before we get to that magically delicious spread, let me just try one plain. And what I really love about these is that they're cheesy, rich, and very flavorful, while at the same time being incredibly light. Okay, as you can see from this shot, they're basically hollow, which besides making them light, makes them very, very fillable, which I'm gonna do with this incredible spread. And that, my friends, really was an amazing combination. I mean, we're taking something that's delicious enough to eat by itself and adding one of the best cream cheese spreads you'll ever taste, which by the way, would have been perfect with just regular cream cheese, but by using Italian cream cheese, which is definitely richer and I think more flavorful, we've taken this combo up to a whole other level. And I know cheese sounds like the last thing you need to put on a cheese puff, until you try this, that is. And then you're like, okay, I understand. And while I usually go with the old Terran spread, sometimes just for a change of pace, I'll go with the old crush and top. But no matter which method I use, the common denominator is, is that I'm absolutely shameless with the amount of spread I'm putting on, since I just can't get enough of that stuff. So if you only make 12 puffs, you're going to have extra, and you're going to be very, very glad you do. That makes a world-class sandwich spread, as well as a stack of carrot sticks, best friend. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling Irish beer cheese puffs. Like I said, this was inspired by something called Kentucky beer cheese, which believe it or not is a cheese spread made with stale beer and cheese, which I know doesn't sound great, but it really is. And if you haven't seen it, for homework, I'm gonna need you to watch it. But the point is beer really does work with cheese, especially in this fun puffy format which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.